Now unfortunately this is a, a pretty dreadful I-beam, uh, it's got lots of sharp corners, uh, this here particularly is a worry as well, uh, if any of you have ever studied uh, stress propagation and crack propagation then you'll know that having a right angle uh, in a piece of steel like that is a very very bad thing because that's going to uh, create a stress point where uh, it, this would probably fail quite quickly actually when it gets loaded um, and also this is all parallel, there's, there's no kind of sloping lines here. Uh, Again, there's tools within AutoCAD that we'll demonstrate in later videos that we can smooth that off with and create a radius inside there. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go from uh, this very uh, kind of uh, clinical uh, parallel uh, I-beam and we're going to create uh, one that has uh, some slopes in it. So if we have a look at uh, creating a slightly different I-beam now, uh, similar dimensions, so we'll just draw it uh, to the right of this one. Uh, again I'm going to use the polyline tool so I could click up here uh, I can type in PL and that will start it up uh, and that's, uh, that gets us started so I'm, I'm going to start it parallel to this one just because uh, I'm slightly obsessive compulsive so I want it to uh, line up with that one so that's my first point again it's completely arbitrary I've only just lined it up with that for the sake of neatness uh, there's no specific kind of position with it on the on the y-axis here um, so that uh, doesn't really uh, come into it there's no position on the x-axis rather so I've picked an arbitrary start point now what we're going to do now is we're going to use the polar coordinate system now uh, if you've studied uh, to a pretty decent level of maths uh, you might be familiar with polar numbers uh, they're basically just another way of expressing uh, points on a two-dimensional uh, space uh, similar to the coordinates that we've used for these two drawings over here uh, but the difference with polar numbers uh, is that a polar number has uh, a length uh, and it also has uh, an angle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a slightly different uh, I-beam with some uh, angles in it that aren't just uh, perpendicular uh, to the other angles. So uh, what we're going to do is again we, this is a relative system so if we type in at to start with you can see down here we've got the at symbol. So we're going to start off going over this way so polar number is made up of length which goes in first so we've got 200 so that's the length of the line that we're going to produce is 200 mil and then if you uh, type in this symbol uh, which is uh, the um, less than greater than symbols uh, but in this case uh, it actually represents an angle uh, and it's important that you use that one that's pointing to the left otherwise this this won't work uh, so that's how we uh, how we tell it that the next instruction is an angle not uh, a point in space. Uh, so we've gone from x and y to length and angle now. So our angle uh, is going to be coming across here uh, and remember in uh, AutoCAD uh, this line here, if I just quickly put the ortho snap on, this line here, this value here is zero degrees and you can actually see that next to the cursor there that we've got zero degrees uh, inputted there. I'm going to turn ortho snap off again just so you can see that uh, it's not affecting the angle that I'm doing now. So we've got the uh, length 200 uh, and now we're going to put in our uh, distance uh, which will be, uh, uh, sorry our angle which in this case will be zero. So we've got a 200 mil line at a zero angle from that point at zero degrees. If we hit enter you can see again we've got a perfectly uh, horizontal line because we told it to be zero degrees. So again if we use the relative system so at we want our next line to come up again by 10 mil so this time we tell it we want it to be 10 mil long but we want the angle this time to be 90 degrees so from zero around to here is 90 degrees so if we type in 90 that gives us that there and then the next one we're going to have instead of having this um, parallel line here to this one uh, this is going to slope up slightly so it's going to end up looking something like this so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make this 95 mil long, so go at, because uh, it's going to be relative to this point. So from here we want to a line 95 mil long, and we want it to come over this way. Now this is only going to slope up by 5 degrees from here, which is not an enormous slope, uh, enormous angle. But if we put in 5 degrees, it measures from this line. So if we put in 5 degrees, it's going to go off like that. So what we need to do is we need to put in 175 degrees because that's 180 and we want it to be 5 degrees back from there so for our angle we're going to put in uh, angle 
0.175 which is 5 degrees less than 180 and enter and you can see there that what we've got is now instead of this um, parallel line, this horizontal line, we've got a line that slopes up the ways. If we now uh, want to put in our next value, so again we're just going to keep using the polar coordinate system, you can chop and change so if we wanted to we could now put in um, a uh, relative coordinate, we could even put in an absolute coordinate if we wanted to spend a lot of time figuring out where it should be. Uh, but as we're doing this one using the polar coordinate system, uh, we'll go at uh, to show that it's relative to that point, and we want this to come up uh, here, and we want this line to be uh, 140 mil long. So we go 140 angle. Now again, this is zero. We want this to come straight up, so this is going to be 90. So we've got 140 mil at an angle of 90 degrees. And you, you notice it doesn't matter where I leave uh, the pointer on the screen here. If I hit enter, it just automatically puts it in uh, wherever your pointer is. So now we're going to come over to here. Again, we want this to be uh, the same length as this. So as as you can see, I'm already instinctively going for the snaps, but we're not going to we're not going to use them that just yet. Uh, so what we're looking at here is we've got an ang uh, a line of 95 mil to match the line there of 95 mil. Uh, so we need to put in at 95 angle, and this time again we want it to slope up by the same amount that uh, this is. So we just simply uh, tell it to have an angle of five degrees, which is obviously there's zero. Five degrees will be about there, so it's probably going to be somewhere around there. And there it is. Come up. By 10, so from that point we want to go at, we want to go 10 mil long at an angle of again it'll be 90 because we're coming uh, straight up from that point. And then coming across the way we want to be at 200 at an angle of 180. Now when we come down at this point uh, we're going to come down by 10 mil so we can go at 10, that's the length of our line. Now the angle we want it to be 90 degrees from there to there, but remember in CAD, in AutoCAD, everything is measured, that is zero degrees. So what we're actually doing is we're telling it from that reference line to come all the way around to here. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, we could tell it, uh, we've got a length of 10 mil, so we could tell it to have an angle of 270. So from there, we've got 90 would be straight up, 180 uh, would be uh, straight across like that so 270 will be down so if we hit enter we've got that one there I'm just going to undo that and show you another way because what we could do if you get a little bit muddled going above 180 degrees uh, and sometimes these angles will be a little bit uh, less nice than 90 degrees uh, what we can do is put in uh, an angle of uh, from here in a negative direction so this ang these angles around here are positive and then once we get uh, from here, if we go this way, that's a negative angle. So if we go uh, at 10 mil length and then go angle minus 90 degrees. So what that means is instead of going that way to 90, it's going to come this way to 90. So if I hit enter, it comes around to there like that. Our next line will be at 95 mil long uh, and the angle, again, we want this to be 5 degrees uh, from uh, there to there, we want to be 5 degrees. Uh, so what we could do is think, well from there all the way around to there would be 360. If I knock 5 off that, that's going to be 355. Uh, or we could go minus 5. Both ways will work absolutely fine. Uh, and then we're going to go down by uh, 140. So from that point we want to go 140 length at an angle of, uh, again we could say 270 or minus 90, just whichever you're more comfortable with, which brings us down to there. Uh, now we're going to come across this way, so we want to be at 95 is the length of uh, that, and then uh, our angle now, we could go minus 175 or we could just type in 185, it's really, uh, again, it's uh, just whatever you're, you're happiest using. So if we go 185, uh, just to prove that that's going to work. And then uh, at this point I could just press C and it would close that off and finish that up. Uh, but as it is, uh, just to 
demonstrate the polar coordinate system we go at uh, 10 notice there's no minus direction now we've not got a negative value for our length it's always a uh, positive value for the length uh, and then our angle uh, will be minus 90 and that should uh, finish up there so again we could keep on drawing if we wanted to and add more lines but that's our section of our line being done so we can hit enter uh, and uh, complete that drawing So you can see the cross section of our I beam is starting to look a little bit more realistic. Uh, it's slightly uh, more like an I beam would be. Uh, again, we'd need to add radiuses to this uh, to uh, get rid of those stress points. Uh, we might even have radiuses here. There might be uh, evidence of where these have been perhaps joined together from different sections. Uh, but again, at this stage, this is uh, more than adequate to illustrate the point. 